I know you get this question a lot, but once we find these therapies and they, and they start being implemented and people are living hundreds of years, that brings up a whole set of other issues in terms of overpopulation, uh, food, I mean, lots of other issues. You know, what, is that kind of a side effect then of, of what ha might happen down the road? A lot of people are terribly, terribly exercised about what society will look like yeah. in a post-aging world. You know, how we would find room for all the people, would dictators live forever, you know, yeah. wouldn't it be boring and things like that. <laughs> the fact is, this is a nonsensical sort of conversation to have because it assumes that we don't have a problem today. And hello, yes, we do have a problem today. We have 100,000 people every day dying of the diseases and disabilities of old age, and furthermore, doing so after a long period, not usually, of you know, decrepitude and disease and mm -hmm. dependence and general misery. We've got a very big problem today. In the industrialized world, the proportion isn't two thirds, it's 90% of all deaths are due to aging. Now, uh, if we look at today, the sorts of trade-offs that we think about, there are trade-offs, sure. You know, the fact that we've made good progress in postponing cardiovascular disease is the main reason why we have so many people today with Alzheimer's disease. Does that mean we think that it was a mistake to make progress against cardiovascular disease? Of course not. What it means is that we need to work that much harder to have similar progress against Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly the same when one looks at other societal consequences. For example, if we were to defeat aging, that would simply motivate us to work a bit harder to um, to improve uh, renewable energy and nuclear fusion and so on so that we wouldn't have such a carbon footprint so that we could have more people on the planet with less environmental impact. You know, these are really obvious points and mm -hmm. it's completely embarrassing that so many people fixate on these concerns and just refuse to, th to acknowledge that we have a problem today that needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, another part of that, if we get these therapies in place that so we can extend our life, does it change? potentially the way a person would live their life? I have absolutely no idea how people are going to live their lives when they can expect to live healthily for a very mm. great deal longer. But I don't really think that it's likely to be very much different from how it is today, except insofar as differences may arise as a result of new technologies. You know, the internet has changed the way that people live. You know, mm -hmm. So uh, plenty can happen that has nothing to do with the actual biomedical progress that we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I mean, really what I think about it, how I think about it is, Yes, there will be things that we have time to do that we haven't got time to do today, and that's good. Also, it means that we're going to have time to get better educated, to have more adult education, more retraining, so that people who might end up being bored living a long time, and indeed who already are bored you know, with a normal <laughs> lifetime, um, you know, will actually understand how to make the most of what life has to offer.